Welcome back to our second video of writing an MNIST classifier from scratch. In the previous video we imported the necessary packages as well as defining the model class. In this video we're going to start by writing the codes for the hyperparameters of the model. So hyperparameters, we have four hyperparameters here. Conventionally, all hyperparameters are written in all capital letters, so let's just follow the same convention. The first and the very important hyperparameter is learning rate, and uh, usually these are very small numbers. And remember, these are hyperparameters, so we can always change them later in order to fine tune uh, the, uh, the hyperparameters as well as the results of the model. The next one is batch size and batch size per pertain to the number of images that our data loader takes as a mini batch to pass to the model for both training and testing and in this case I'm selecting 128 next one is the number of epochs and uh, just for the sake of illustration, we want to be done quickly with the training here. So I've just select the five number of epochs. These val this value could be very high. Could be like on the range of like 200 or 500. And uh, after number of epochs, we go with the final one. And remember the output of the first layer was some arbitrary number that I have decided to set it as a hyperparameter. After this, I'm going to define the device. Device is either CUDA or CPU. If it's CUDA, it means that we have a GPU processing unit available that is CUDA enabled and we're going to perform all the processes on our GPU. If it's CPU, all of this is going to be done on CPU. Obviously, GPUs are preferred because they are much faster in perf performing the vectorized calculation of the deep learning process. So we would like CUDA to take over if it's available. The way we handle it is by saying device is equal to CUDA if torch.cuda. is available else I want it to be CPU. We also implement a print function for our device so that we would know whether CUDA is selected or CPU. And let me just write here the device. Next thing is to instantiate the model this is very simple, it's just calling the class that we already write uh, in the previous video. So my image classifier, it needs three inputs. Number one is number of pixels and it is 784 because the images in the MNIST data set are 28 by 28 and the multiplication of 28 by 28 is 784. We have num out one which, gonna, which is going to be equal to the hyperparameter that we just set for this and num classes which is going to be 10 in the MNIST dataset. But the one thing we should never forget is after instantiating the model we definitely need to export the model to our processing unit. So here we're going to say model is going to be equal to model to device. After that we need the optimizer and for this I'm going to use the widely used Adam optimizer so our optimizer is going to be equal to optim dot Adam obviously it needs to know which models parameters it needs to optimize so first thing to introduce here is to say model parameters and it also needs to know with what learning rate it needs to perform the optimization 
and for this we have our hyperparameter. Then we have the loss function to define. I will call it uh, the criterion and for this we're using an, an the cross entropy loss. Let's run this, everything's fine, and you can see that as for our device, we're using CUDA. Now we have to download the MDS data and define the data loader. For this, we need to import a package from Torch Vision. We will import the transforms module. The transform module contains all the functions that deal with image augmentation. These are mostly um, in the realm of zooming in, zooming out, cropping, scaling, rotating, and uh, also transitioning the data into PyTorch tensors. PyTorch tensors are a type of data sets that are um, required by PyTorch as the input data and we always have to transform our data sets into PyTorch tensors so we're going to need these this module transforms in order to do that now here we're going to download the data first and for that I'm going to say mnist train it's going to be equal to datasets.mnist we're going to define root, which is the subfolder in which the data sets will, be, will get downloaded into. Then I'm going to define the transform, which is going to be transforms dot to tensor. Next, I'm going to ask the data to be downloaded. And I'm requiring the train portion of the data to be downloaded. For the test data set, I'm going to copy paste everything here. I'm just going to change the name to MNIST test and the train will be set to false. For defining the data loader, we're going to say train loader is equal to the data loader that we already uh, imported. And uh, the first thing data loader wants is to know which data set is, it, it's going to deal with. And here we're going to deal with MNIST train. It's going to also need a number as for batch size. For that, we have the hyperparameter batch size. And it's going to know, uh, want to know whether it wants to shuffle it or not. And uh, we most likely always want to shuffle. The data. Again, I'm going to copy the same line and paste it underneath for the test data set. And the only thing I'm going to change here is the data set, and that is in this test. So that should be it. We're not done yet because we have one single error. Yeah, so um, here, this flag train was with capital T, and that was wrong. Okay, so basically, we are done by this um, video at this point. Uh, we introduced the hyperparameters device model optimizer and loss function, and we also downloaded the MNIST data and wrapped them around a data loader. I will see you in the next video where we're going to define the training loop for our model. See you there.